Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. Do you love the look of tooled leather? Me too. But I only want to make a few projects with it. So instead of investing in a whole bunch of new tools, I decided to mimic the look of tooled leather with a Cricut cutting machine. After some experimenting and help from the talented Kay Hall at cleversomeday.com, we found a way to do it. It takes some work and some unconventional uses for a few tools, but the result is detailed and really, really nice. I'll show you how to add this terrific technique to a leather journal cover. So come with me to the craft table to look at all the supplies that we need. I love little journals, and a custom leather cover like this is the perfect touch, I think. Now I have a few free designs that work really well with this technique that you can use or even customize. One complete design was inspired by Hugen and Munin, Odin's ravens who represent thought and memory in Norse culture. They felt like a really great fit for this journal. Another has a simple abstract floral design. And the third has a few flourishes, but it's a good spot for some initials or a monogram. And that's the one we'll customize and make together today. The journal cover does take some time between softening the leather with water and letting the stain dry, so plan to follow the steps over a few days. For that reason, and because they're so much fun to make, you might want to do more than one at a time. I chose this genuine leather, and it works really nicely for this project. But since leather is a natural material, it's not always the same thickness. So before you get too far, make sure it will fit under your roller on your mat. It needs to be thinner than two millimeters for it to fit. Now this process uses the fine debossing tip, so it does require a Maker 3 or Original Maker. If you haven't explored, try the process from my leather bookmarks video over at jennifermaker.com slash how to engrave leather. We'll also need the foil tool with a medium tip, but no foil, that's right, more on that in a little bit, and you'll want a deep cut blade. I'll also show you a helpful way to make sure your mats stay clean while working with materials that shed like leather, and it might involve this little stuff here. We'll also want a purple strong grip machine mat along with strong grip transfer tape, a scraper, and painter's tape for that part. Then you'll need a damp sponge when you're ready to cut it all out. Beyond the actual design, leather stain makes all the difference. There are lots of colors to choose from. Just make sure that your choice will work on natural leather. You'll definitely want disposable nitrile gloves, some butcher paper, paper towels, a rag, and these little wool daubers to add the stain with minimal mess. They're also helpful for the optional leather finish. And just like any other time that you're working with stain or a similar product, be sure to open a window to help with ventilation. We'll use several of our usual crafting tools, but a true control knife, a ruler, and a self-healing mat will make trimming the leather to size a breeze. And I'll show you how to use this neat leather working tool called a slicker to make perfect edges. It's really cool. We'll also use an owl, which looks like this, to make small holes in the leather and the Cricut will show us exactly where to make them. And when it comes to the journal part, I'll help you prepare and add sheets of paper to the inside. A needle, some twine, and a paper cutter turn plain old printer paper into something special. The Cricut Design Space Steps are really important for this project, so make sure to follow along with those. And I'm going to show you a few Design Space hacks to use our tools in unconventional ways, and you won't get the same results without these steps. I'll show you how to customize a gift for your favorite writer. So let's get started. Step one, get my free leather journal patterns. Go to jennifermaker.com slash 458 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for number 458 and then click it to download the zip file. The download folder includes PDFs to tool by hand and DXF or SVG files to use with a cutting machine. I'll show you how to use the SVGs with a Cricut cutting machine. There are three journal designs to choose from, a floral version, one with ravens, and one for initials. I'll show you how to customize the initial design. 
upload the SVG file of your choice to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload files. Step two, prepare your leather. On a self-healing mat, use a ruler and a craft knife to cut your leather to 10 inches by 11 and a half inches. We need to place the leather fuzzy side down in order to cut and tool the leather's exterior. But sticking it directly to the machine mat will leave a lot of little fuzzy things. Transfer tape is a good buffer here. So cut a piece of strong grip transfer tape, a bit taller and a bit wider than your piece of leather. Remove the backing off the transfer tape and place it sticky side down onto the fuzzy side of the leather centered onto it. Use your scraper tool to adhere them together really well. Now since the leather is thicker than most materials, and we don't want the transfer tape to stick to the rollers, we won't place the material right in the corner. Place the leather's top left corner a half an inch in from the left and down from the top on a purple strong grip machine mat. Transfer tape down. Have the longer dimension run horizontally. Make sure the leather lines up with the straight lines on the mat to help with alignment. Dampen the leather by gently wiping a wet sponge up and down and side to side. The leather will get darker, which is exactly what we want. Do your best to evenly distribute the moisture. Allow the leather to sit for 30 minutes before using it with your Cricut. Step 3. Prepare the design files. Here's how my initials design looks like on the canvas in Cricut Design Space. You can use these steps for the other designs too, or a different design that you want to create yourself. We'll move the design around a bit, so duplicate it and move the copy to the side as a reference. I've added my initials as a reference, but let's change them. Click the text icon on the left side of your canvas and type the initials you want to use. I'll add GR for Greg Reese, my fiance. Click on the font icon to see your options. I'm using a font called Adorn S, which you can purchase from my affiliate link at jennifermaker.com slash Adorn S. Remember to search under System for fonts that you've installed on your computer. Drag the letters roughly into place. With the lock icon closed, resize them if needed so they're about the same size as the JM in the original. Now select the journal design and click Ungroup. Select the decoration layer with the JM. Click Contour at the bottom of the layers panel. In the pop-up, click the J and the M to hide them in the design, and then click the X to close the group. Now the GR is where the JM was. Hold the shift key to select the initials and the decoration layer, and then click group. And here's the secret to getting a tooled look on leather. Multiple passes with different tools. And some non-traditional uses. Duplicate the group decoration and the initials layers until you have four identical ones. Select them all and use a line center so they overlap perfectly. Click the top copy in the layers panel and change the operation to deboss. Then change the other three layers to foil medium. We're just going to use the tool, not the foil sheet though. Select all four group design layers and move them back into the right position on the journal cover using the original copy for reference if needed. Then delete the reference. In the layers panel, click the group of six layers with circles and change the operation to deboss. These will help us place holes using the awl for the jute string. Select all the layers and click attach. Your design is now ready. Step four, cut your journal cover. Make sure the right machine is selected in the top corner and click make it. On the prepare screen, you should only see one mat with the journal shape and the design. If you see something different, go back and try again. Drag the journal so it will be created in the area covered with leather on your mat. Use the lines for reference. Leave the material size at 12 by 12 inches, even though we're using a slightly smaller piece of leather. And then click continue. On the make screen, click browse all materials. 
The list is short and leather is not an option. That's because of the operations that we're using for this, but no worries. After some experimenting, we found that the craft board setting works really well. Select it and click apply and leave the pressure at default. Check your leather's dampness. If any spots still seem wet, let it dry a bit longer. Place thin painter's tape along the edges of the leather to keep it in place. Make sure that the tape won't get in the way of the cutting or tooling. And move your star wheels over as far as you can as they will mark your leather when it's feeding into your Cricut. Now place your fine debossing tip in the quick swap housing and then place it in clamp B on your Cricut maker. Make sure your medium foil tip and the housing and the deep point blade are ready to go too. Press the flashing arrows to load your mat and then press the middle flashing button to begin debossing. When the debossing is done, do not remove the machine mat yet. Instead, swap the debossing tool for the medium foil transfer tool in clamp B and press the middle flashing button to continue the process. Once the foil tool is done, swap in the deep point blade and press the flashing button again. And even though the fine point blade is listed, changing the tool won't confuse the machine. Now unload your mat and remove the leather. If you find that any areas didn't cut all the way through, just use your craft knife to finish the cut on your self-healing mat. Place the leather journal cover in water for a few minutes to soften it. Then take it out and fold it in half so the holes match up on the right and the design is visible. Place something heavy on the folded leather and leave it there for a few hours or until the leather is dry. This will help your leather stay folded. Step 5. Stain the journal. Once the leather has dried, grab your awl and your slicker. Place the awl's sharp tip in the center of one and press down on the handle to start making a hole. Then carefully lift the leather and support either side around the awl. Keep your fingers out of the way and carefully press the sharp tip through the leather. Once it's through, move the tool up and down and in circles a bit to widen and smooth the hole. We'll need to get a thick needle with knotted jute through it later. Carefully use the awl to make holes at the five other spots. Then, to make the edges smoother, hold the journal with one side up and grab your slicker. Starting with the smallest opening in the tool, insert the leather edge and then run the tool back and forth along the full length. This will start rounding the cut edge. After a few swipes, use the middle slot and then the biggest slot. That makes the roundness more gradual. No need for chisels. Stain really makes the designs pop. If you want to use it, first protect your work area with butcher paper and have some paper towels handy. I recommend wearing gloves to protect your hands too. Place the journal face up. We use the amazing EcoFlow stain in multiple colors. Acorn brown is a great traditional look or try another color for a more modern look. Shake the stain well and then use the wool daubers to apply a light amount to the front surface. Circular motions really get in all the crevices. Some extra in the tooled areas and the edges helps too and then let the stain dry overnight. You can leave the suede inside plain or stain it or dye it for a more finished look. Remember the suede is thirstier than the outside though and it requires a lot more stain or dye. Really push it into the fibers to cover all of the plain color. Two coats worked well for me. Step six, assemble your leather journal. You can try different ways to keep the journal closed, but I decided to add jute ties. Thread 18 inches or so of jute on a leather needle. You can trim the end to a point to help. Tie a knot at the needle by twisting it to make a loop and feed the short end through. Let's start on the front cover. Pull the needle through the side hole from the inside. 
If the hole you made with the awl is tight, you might need to use your rag to grip the needle. When you have an even amount of jute on either side of the leather, cut it at the needle. Tie a knot close to the cover's edge and add a tie to the back cover in the same way. Now for the center where the jute will keep the paper in place. Thread more jute on your needle and tie a knot again. You can trim the excess to make it easier to sew through the holes. The spine holes might be a bit tight, so you can poke through them again with the awl. Rotating the tool a bit can stretch them too. Starting at the bottom, push the needle through from the inside, then back in through the next hole. Even off the lengths inside the journal, and then cut off the needle and tie the same way as the sides. Add a tie to the upper spine holes too. If the needle has trouble, you can use your rag to press down on the leather around the area while pulling hard. And then finish the last tie. Now take up to 25 pieces of 8.5 by 11 inch laser jet 32 pound paper and cut it down to 8 inches by 6.5 inches in no more than groups of 6. Stack and fold all of your pieces of paper in half to be 4 inches by 6.5 inches. With the journal cover open and the ties out to the sides, align the crease with the stacked papers. Bring the two spine ties to meet and tie them in a secure knot so the paper can't easily slide out. I didn't trim my ends because I might want to retie the jute tighter or looser in the future, but it's up to you. Close the journal and test out the closure ties. For an added layer of shine and protection, you can buff on some leather conditioner like mink oil. You've worked hard on this journal cover, so conditioning it as needed will make it last longer. And how about that? Now you can create a tooled leather look with your Cricut Maker. I hope seeing some new ways to use your tools will give you a confidence boost and encourage you to experiment. It's so much fun to find new ways to use tools to bring a project to life. Now, if you have any questions about how to make your own leather journal with a Cricut, please let me know. I love to help. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.